Shalom, blessings to you. It's Miriam Rachel, your faithful black sheep. Welcome, sheep in the garden. Hi. Let's continue in the Colburn book of manuscripts where we left off. The slaves spared by the destroyer left the accursed land forthwith. Their multitude moved in the gloom of a half-dawn under the mantle of fine swirling gray ash leaving the burnt fields and shattered cities behind them. Many Egyptians attached themselves to the host, for one who was great led them forth, that is Moses, a priest prince of the inner courtyard. Fire mounted up on high, and its burning left with the enemies of Egypt. It, it rose up from the ground as a fountain, and hung as a curtain in the sky. And that's exactly kind of what we're seeing. We're getting hints of that already, where the clouds are bright red like fire, and they seem to fall like a curtain all the way from the ground up into the sky. So we have a little preview of what's coming. In seven days by Rimwar, the accursed ones journeyed to the waters. They're not accursed at all. The ones left behind are who is accursed. <laughs> the Jews journeyed to the waters. They crossed the heaving wilderness while the hills melted around them. Above, the skies were torn with lightning. They were sped by terror, but their feet became entangled in the land and the wilderness shut them in. They came up against the waters which blocked the way, and their hearts were in despair. The night was a night of fear and dread, for there was a high moaning above, that is, the shofars of our, our Father in heaven, and black winds from the underworld were loosed, and fire sprang up from the ground. The hearts of the slaves shrank within them, for they knew the wrath of Pharaoh followed them and that there was no way of escape. Pharaoh had gathered his army and followed the slaves. After he departed, there were riots and disorders behind him, for the cities were plundered. The laws were cast out of the judgment halls and trampled underfoot in the streets. The storehouses and granaries were burst open and robbed. Uh, a lot of looting going on. Roads were flooded. None could pass along them. People lay dead on every side. The palace was split and the princes and the officials fled so that none was left with authority to command. The list of numbers were destroyed. Public places were overthrown and households became confused and unknown. And as we know, Egypt never recovered. Pharaoh pressed on. He sought to bring back the slaves, for the people said their magic was greater than the magic of Egypt, because our God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. The host of Pharaohs came upon the slaves by the saltwater shores, but was held back from them by a breath of fire. A great cloud was spread over the hosts and darkened the sky. None could see except for the fiery glow and the unceasing lightnings, which rent the covering cloud overhead. A whirlwind arose in the east and swept over the encamped host. A gale raged all night, and in the red twilight dawn, there was a movement of the earth. The waters receded from the seashore and were rolled back on themselves. There was a strange silence, and then, in the gloom, it was seen that the waters had parted, leaving a passage between. The land had risen, but it was disturbed and trembled. The way was not straight or clear. The waters about it were as if spun within a bowl. The swamp land alone remained undisturbed. From the horn of the destroyer came a high, shrilling noise which stopped the ears of men. And this destroyer is what we call Planet X. The slaves had been making sacrifices in despair. 
Their lamentations were loud. Now, before the strange sight, there was hesitation for the space of a breath. They stood still and silent. Then, in exultation, their leader led them into the midst of the waters, right through the middle. And all became still over the sea and upon the shore, but behind them the earth shook and boulders split with a great noise. The wrath of heaven was removed to a distance and stood upwards of the two hosts. Still the host of Pharaoh held its ranks, firm in resolve before the strange and awful happenings, and apparently undaunted by the fury which raged by their side. Their stern faces were lit darkly by the fiery curtain. Um, then the fury departed, and there was silence. Stillness spread over the land while the host of Pharaoh stood without movement in the red glow. Then with a shout the captains went forward, and the host rose up behind them. The curtain of fire had rolled up into a dark, billowing cloud which spread out as a canopy. There was a stirring of the waters, but they followed, past the place of the great whirlpool. The passage was confused in the midst of the waters, and the ground beneath unstable. Here, in the midst of the tumults of water, the stillness was broken by a mighty roar. And through the rolling pillars of cloud, the wrath of the destroyer descended upon the hosts. The heavens roared as with a thousand thunders. The bowels of the earth were sundered, and earth shrieked in its agony. The cliffs were torn away and cast down landslides. The dry ground fell beneath the waters, and the great waves broke upon the shore, sweeping in rocks from seaward. The great surge of rocks and waters overwhelmed the chariots of the Egyptians, who went before the footmen. The chariot of even the pharaoh was hurled into the air as if by a mighty hand, and he was crushed in the midst of the rolling waters. Afterward, the broken land lay helpless, and invaders came out of the gloom like carrion. A strange people came up against Egypt, and none stood to fight, for strength and courage were gone. The uh, invaders that came, they were led by Alcanon, came up out of the land of gods because of the wrath of heaven, which had laid their land waste as well. There too had been a plague of reptiles and ants and signs and omens and an earthquake. There also had been turmoil, disaster, disorder, and famine, with the gray breath of the destroyer sweeping the ground and stopping the breath of men. Children of darkness, and now, no doubt these are the same 22 armies which are like brain eaters, man eaters, uh, they're dog men, they're, they're creatures. These are children of darkness that King Alexander in scripture prayed that Yahuwah would bind them behind the mountains. Um, but they came out of the eastern mountains during this time. By the way of the wilderness and by the way of Yathnobis, they fell upon the stricken land from behind the gray cloud, before the lifting of the darkness and before the coming of the purifying winds. And we know from prophecy in scripture that they will also be coming after we are raptured out and the dead have risen. So will these armies come again from the northeast. Their hearts were still filled with terror and with the memory of the wrath which had struck them from out of heaven. They were still filled with the memory of the fearsome sight of the destroyer, and they honestly knew not what they did. Care taught these things to the children of light in the days of darkness. After the building of Ram uh, Budeth, uh, before the death of Pharaoh and Ked, this is written in this land and in our tongue by Lewadar, who himself chose it for saving 
and it was not seen until the latter days. Now let's turn a few pages and we're going to go into chapter 33 of Annexed Scroll 1, Book of Manu Manuscripts, still in the Colburn book. O oh, great city, O oh, heart of Egypt, your habitations are overthrown, your sacred shrines lie buried beneath the sands of time. The dust of ages enwraps you as a dead one is swathed within the tomb. Your temples still stand and ring with the noise, but the solemn shrines are silent. They have become an abode for the wild dog and scorpion, and your roads are highways of wickedness. Behold, in the days long gone down into dust, the whirlwind came and earth poured out her wrathful breath so that you were burnt. The evildoers were swept away by the waters, and the wicked ones were swallowed up in the fires. The days of the years were shortened, and the times of all things were altered. The seasons were turned around, so that the seed rotted within the soil, and no green shoots came forth to greet the day. All buds withered upon the vines, the land lay dead under its gray shroud. The moon changed the order of her ways, and the sun set himself a new course. The sun set himself a new course, so that men knew not where they were, and all were afflicted. The stars even swam in a new direction. And right now they, they all swim clockwise. They go around Polaris. They'll obviously be going counterclockwise when the poles flip, right? That's what this is saying. And the whole order of things were, was changed. O oh, Egypt, from those days of calamity, you emerged broken. Your spirit was not intact. Your heart shaken. What has happened to you, O oh, land of mine? Weep, O oh, land of Egypt. Weep for the things that have gone. Weep for the spirit now departed. Weep for the dead gods. Weep for the great gods so high above them all that you scarcely knew him. Weep for the destruction that has befallen you. Weep for all the beauty and glory that have gone down into the dust. Weep for eternal ages and sleep forevermore. And we know Egypt never recovered after that. Four times now the stars have moved to new positions, and twice the sun has changed the direction of his journey. Twice the destroyer has struck earth, and three times the heavens have opened and shut. Twice the land has been swept clean by water. It says, um, about the days of Nun, we have no knowledge. Before creation commenced, there was the one father-mother being. And from this divinity came uh, all heavenly things. And it also says heaven is the sphere of God. But we're going to jump ahead quite a bit to the book of origins, chapter 3, the flood tale in the Colburn book. It was the wildland cultivators who gave the flood tale to our house building forebears. But the generation of its happening is lost in those days. Men were inclined to the ways of peace, and harvest followed winter without change. But it came about that looking up into a darkling night sky, they saw a strangely formed moon chariot overhead. It passed away into the rosy dawning of a newborn day, but then at the night end of the sky roof appeared the dread figure of a wamkored, now, what they call a Wamkored, we call Planet X. We know this thing has numerous names. Uh, revealing itself to the eyes of wandering men, it crawled out into the brightness. And in this book, they'll also call it the Doom Dragon. The foul breath of the nightcomer, newly sprung from the dark depths of its unearthly lair, spread across the brightening face of heaven like an evil gray veil, 
and even the ever fearless son withdrew to gird himself in red war armor. Even the ever fearless son withdrew to gird himself in red war armor. The fast beating hearts of men first shriveled with despair at the fearsome sight, then rose while their throats responded with glad cries as the moon chariot came back over the dim horizon. So I guess they were sitting in darkness and the moon appeared and they were very happy. There was an awful hell echoing clash with the noise of 10,000 rolling thunders and men bold enough to look were stricken with blindness and uncovered ears were deafened. And that's one of the things that Jesus told me. He said, cover your windows and when all this is going on, as the dead are rising, do not look outside. I mean, that's what the window coverings are for. We are to stay uh, in our prayer closets praying. And he promised me that my angel would come and rapture me out. But the men bold enough to look were stricken with blindness and uncovered ears were deafened. So in your little survival kit, you're going to need some earplugs. Their ears were deafened forever. The hellish uh, awamkored drooled white cinders, which, if they touched the skins of men below, raised evil wheels, that is, boils. The unearthly angels fell apart and hurled great self-created rocks at each other. And we know there is a heavenly battle going on. Uh, and it's about to be over because God wins. Hallelujah. And onlookers below dashed for protective shelter as they howled down out of the sky above. The very earth herself, immovable, was sickened with fear and her bowels became loosened with dread. Her belly trembled before the awful sight. Men, looking anxiously to their Lord, the sun, they were all sun worshippers, were dismayed to see his constant change of war garb from red to blue, then to yellow, then green, then brown. And this is what we are seeing right now in the heavens as they come in closer. Um, the good Mother Earth opened her ground mouth and roared ear-cracking protests while her whole comforting body shook in fear under the gloomy battle shadow form above Men and beasts were drawn together in a strange brotherhood of fear. And that is what is prophesied in, uh, in the Bible as well, that wild beasts will come down not only to tear apart evil men, but also to comfort men uh, who are in trouble and to help us until our angels can come and rapture us out. Hallelujah. Those hardy enough to maintain a watch on the combat saw the flashing chariot crush the writhing body of the nightcomer, and then saw its vile black blood, thick like resin, fall upon the thankful bosom of the earth. Where the blood fell, flames sprang up. The fear-heated, blood-despoiled body of Mother Earth was cooled and refreshed by the incoming soothing moon tears. So it's raining at the same time as it's raining fire. And this is the tale of the sky fight. But whether it happened before or after the generation of the flood tale, none now truly knows. It concerns the doom dragon, which has come more than once and will come again. And the last music mankind will hear is the shrill throbbing notes of its doom song. This is the flood tale, which has come down to us from our house-building forebearers, and it happened in days, generations ago, when men were widely divided. So the day came, as come it always must, whenever peace and plenty abide. For then earth displays a defect in her instructiveness. When the soothsayers saw culkers in the night skies, but they were unable to agree amongst themselves as to what these portended. Some said this, some said that, 
while the wiser ones listened, saying nothing. And that's the exact same thing we are having going on right now. Some people say Sun Simulator. Some people say Harp. Some people say Noah. Um, I say it's our Father in Heaven. But as we know, these people are unable to agree amongst themselves as to what these signs are portending. The day came when sleeping earth awoke to a great silence and stillness and not a breath of air stirring the anticipating trees and no bird left its perch and every animal remained quiet within its den or in the field. All was hushed and motionless waiting. Then the soaring sun brought low moaning winds which stirred the trees and grasses to rustling murmuring life but all living creatures huddled closer together. The sky roof above was darkened and lowered. It was ruddily hued, that is the color of red, and gave out sharp, whip-cracking sounds, as though it would break asunder, with now and then a shrill, long-drawn cry. And we know that to be the shofar of our Father in Heaven, the voice of Jesus. In heart-thumping procession, awesomely figured uh never before seen like angels in the sky men lived through fear-struck days of dread not knowing what to expect and we are seeing those same angels in the sky right now and these uh phantasmata uh, appearances will only increase until the end he wants us he's calling us to repentance he doesn't want anybody to go to hell Okay, so during which time there was no true night and one heart-stopping sight after another passing before their horror-filled eyes. And when darkness did fall, it was not the restful night darkness which soothed work-weary men, lulling them to revitalizing sleep. No, indeed, it was that form of darkness known as the smothering cloak though never before had it spread so wide. Water streamed downward from the fountain spouts of the sky, not as rain falls, but as water drops out from a pail upturned. Neither was it the pure, true rain, as it was tainted with bitter blood from some strange battlefield in the vast sky spaces and contained broken pieces of the rainbow. The sky's roof itself was borne down to the very surface of the seething waters, and Mother Earth cowered beneath it as the shrinking field mouth cowers before the harvester's footfall. A vast black cloud was drawn like a curtain across the sky roof, stretching from horizon to horizon, and rising above it were strange billows of flame and smoke, Though what the fire consumed, it is not possible to even guess, for all know water does not burn. We know the upper heavens are water. And then all things ceased movement. All was silent and still, a heavy, ill-boding, brooding silence, the stillness of heart-hammering fear. Then, with awful suddenness, came a high wave of wall of dark, white, fanged, w edged waters, sweeping swiftly in fearsome irresistibility. These are tidal waves, and it carried everything before it as a broom sweeps the floor, and accompanying it was a high-born note, long drawn out again, Jesus' voice, the shofar, and behind it, upon the seething waters, all the fruits of the land, house debris, trees, bloated dead animals and humans floated upon the wild, wide waters. There was an earthy, brown, foamy scum which drifted strangely over the surface, not sinking, yet not like oil, for it was gritty. It was irregular and held together. It was like the scum on a fuller's tub. And there was a great downpouring of rain, which stopped after seven days. Then the sky roof rose back into its proper place, 
and our fear-struck forebearers saw once more the blessed light of day. They stood upon their drenched mountainsides and saw great trees, the like of which had never before been seen, float past, float past. Hell-formed, hideous things came up from the depths and swelling burst on the surface. There were fearful sea monsters and great whirlpools, terrible things from unknown places, and as terrible as it was for them, oh, woe, to, woe, woe, woe to those left behind. Um, yeah. Wild creatures were washed about dead or dying. The surging seas tore between the high mountains in great riptides of dirty waters. And standing on their hilltops, our frightened forebears saw the swimming house made fast against the sea come up to the land, and out from it came men and beasts from Turfola. And there are many, many more tales in this book. I do not count it as holy scripture because it denies the uh, divinity of our Lord and so Savior, Jesus Christ. But it is an excellent history book, and it has these wonderful accounts, first-hand accounts of uh, the not only the Jews leaving Egypt, but also the flood tale. I will put a link to the first video in case you missed it and um, in the description. And I pray that you are blessed. This channel is not monetized. Please be a blessing. Pay it forward and give all you can to the poor. Keep your eyes on the skies and keep your knees on the floor. Let's stay in prayer unceasingly and not fall asleep. This is a great time to be distracted by all the cares of this world and to spiritually fall asleep. Let's not do that. Let's stay awake and let's pray every day that we are counted worthy to escape what is coming. And again, I will give you my instructions that Jesus gave me. Cover your windows and should it go dark, just remain inside no matter what happens outside. Do not panic. Do not run around. You will get killed out there. You could go blind or you could die of fright. You could also lose your hearing from the shrilling sound of the trumpet. And it's not just a prophecy in the Bible. It is also recorded in the book of Colburn that this is a fact. So uh, wait for your angel to rapture you out in your prayer closet. God will protect you. I mean, he loves his children, and we are not appointed to his wrath. Let us not stop praying for this world. Just as God came back for his black sheep, which I am one of them, there are many others, many, many, many others like me who are just as lost in this world, just as confused and just as, you know, broken down by this evil world. And they need to be woken up. And why hasn't Jesus come back yet? Because he doesn't want anybody. He promised me nobody gets left behind. So let us be patient while he gathers the rest of his black sheep. And let us trust him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep a song in your heart, the Bible in your lap, and a prayer on your tongue. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, I love you. I'm praying for you. Keep your head held high. Amen.